for a deeper insight into mRNA vaccine technology and how it's shaping modern medicine. We're joined now by William Hasseltine. He's chair and president of Axis Health International and author of Variants, the Shape Shifting Challenge of COVID-19. Uh, welcome to the show. You know, first I want to ask you, listening to these reports, this is your uh, world. Uh, how does all that make you feel? Well, it's certainly an optimistic view. What I would say about all technologies, and I've been around uh, to see the birth of uh, recombinant DNA technologies, which has revolutionized medicine, is that they all go through a period of disbelief, hyper-enthusiasm, again disbelief, and then some use. We're now at the point, the apogee, the uh, hyper-enthusiasm, uh, which has never really fulfilled the maximum dreams, although it has made substantial differences to medicine. This is a new and valuable technology. I should say it's already been approved in a number of uh, highly specialized drugs by companies like Elnylam that have actually pioneered the use of uh, messenger RNAs as drugs, uh, and now as vaccines. But it hasn't worked for all vaccines. I'll give you one, for example, respiratory syncytial virus has been very difficult to treat with messenger RNAs. There may be something very special about the coronavirus, particularly the SARS-CoV-2, that makes it so great. It's not going to be for every disease, but let's hope it lives up to at least some of the promise you heard just a minute ago. In terms of the technology of developing mRNA, they've been working on it for years. In terms of the development of it, is it finished? Does it still progress? Or are now we simply looking for different applications and usage? Well, it, it's more of the latter. We know how to do it. We know how to make the RNA more stable, so it's just not normal cellular RNA. It looks enough like cellular RNA that it fools the cell. Uh, we have ways of getting the RNA into a number of different types of cells, but not into all cells yet. So we're still some development to go, but it is now a, as I think your, your uh, previous speaker said, it's certainly with the uh, COVID vaccines going into hundreds of millions of people, a proven technology. That's what it wasn't and now it is. So basically with the COVID-19 vaccines, the mRNA vaccines, you're getting a boost of, uh, you're getting the proteins which are creating the antibody similar to an infection but that's done before any infection. How would that work with cancer? Would you simply give one to anyone who's at high risk of cancer or would it be something to treat cancer? Uh, it would be the second first, the treatment. Uh, years ago, I developed one of the very first uh, immunotherapies for prostate cancer, where we took the prostate cells from a person, exposed them to the immune sentinels and then put them back into people, and it was an approved drug. It's one of the very first. Uh, that's one thing you could do. But it, as in terms of preventive, we do have certain vaccines to prevent a number of cancers, cervical cancer from papillomaviruses, hepatitis B cancers. Those are huge cancers that have caused trouble all over the world. We also have drugs that stop cancers before they can get started, the hepatitis C. So these antiviral drugs and vaccines have stopped viral cancers. Whether you can use the same technology for a cancer once it's started is hypothetical. It's interesting. It's a wonderful experimental idea, uh, along with a number of others. The biggest breakthrough in cancer research has been the use of what are called checkpoint inhibitors to allow your immune system to recognize your own cells as foreign. Those have worked really well. Whether we can be more specific with any kind of therapy to stimulate the immune system to be even more precise than it is remains to be seen, but mRNA technologies deserve a good shot at it and they'll get it. I know a lot of uh, HIV researchers had their work diverted to focus on COVID-19 when this pandemic started. Uh, this is a virus that has evaded scientists. They've made progress, but largely for decades. Uh, will any of this technology help them in what they're doing? Um, you know, that's a very interesting question. And certainly people will be trying now to use messenger RNA vaccines for HIV. It's eluded everyone so far. It's still up in the air. There's still new trials for vaccines just being launched just now. So there is hope for that. There's also hope 
uh, for very long-term prophylactic drugs, drugs that can work at least six months for one shot, perhaps a year, that would bring the, treat the prevention of uh, HIV infection very close to a, uh, a flu vaccine, where at least you'd get the shot every six months, every year, you'd be protected. So there is some hope on that front, even if we don't crack the vaccine problem with HIV. There's still hope for very effective prevention from a single shot for a long time.